So <clears throat> I'm going to demo this uh, module that our good friend Neeraj has been working on. Uh, this is really the uh, his like, his GitHub um, page, and I can't. I try to access the notification or the messages here, so I can actually share this link, but I couldn't because I'm accessing using a browser. Uh, sorry, one second. So anyway, so this is a module created by Neeraj, and it sh it it will be paid uh, to get access to it. So the way what he did here is he created a way to create a sign sign up so you can actually if you have a SaaS environment you can actually create steps for for someone to sign up uh, pay and then get access to the, to the service and everything happens um, right away and I did added some stuff that, that I wanted to add on the top of what he provide uh, to make it look uh, like this demo. So this is his module here. So if you uh, install his module, you have a site uh, registration page uh, steps where you can actually create the flow of the signup process. Um, and for me, I created a, a page called school so I can capture school related information. Uh, it, this can be anything you want. And all we're doing here, we're adding the widget. So you can really add any widget you want to capture any information you want during the sign up process. So as you can see here, I put a paragraph and then we'll see the front end. And then here I put address, city, state, zip code. Um, there's another page here uh, to capture information to create the admin account. So I grab the username, admin password, verify the admin password an email, again, here you can add anything you want. There is a step here to verify email. Um, so uh, there is, a, you can verify that email to make sure you're not registering junk. And then at here, you can also capture a payment. He built a complete integration with Stripe. So uh, uh, this will be utilizing Stripe. And then you can, you know, you're, you're finished. You're finishing the uh, steps. So here you can add any page you want. You can remove a page if you want. Uh, everything has uh, an event, so you can hook into every step through code as well. So it's not always a UI, uh, but if you want to do something of a specific um, step, you can do that using a, a handler. I uh, did a good job on that because I'm utilizing events to customize this uh, how I did it. And then I took this, um, I took this and I created something on the top of it, which is called products. Um, this is, there's not much here. It's really a content items that I create to be able to create a product. So the user can select uh, what product they want to pick in order to sign up. And we'll see this in a second. Um, so just a title position where you want the product to be. Uh, and then uh, there is a way to put a setup amount uh, if you want uh, to charge someone X amount of money to set up and then amount. And then how frequent do you want to charge that customer? Um, then here, I you can select the recipe. So you, sometime that this product is used, you have this uh, recipe being executed and you can have a feature, a, 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 a features profile added. Um, in this case, I added a way you can add add-ons to your product. I'm not, we're not going to worry about that, but you know, maybe you want to put limited, I don't know, two gigs of a space or two gigs of database or whatever the case is. So anyway, this is just a, a, a way to select the product. So this is the admin function. This is the main thing is to creating a site uh, registration page. But once you have that, um, this is a front end. So I created a, a site where I put my widget. So this widget, all it does, it just display my products in a, in a, in a, in a, in this format. And in this case, I can select whichever product I want. So let's say I want a blog site and then you can sign up with a, bl a blog site and then you can hit sign up. And the next step is going to follow through whatever that site sign up. So now we entered the site sign up process. So in here we can put test, 
site abbreviation. In this case, I'm actually using the site abbrevi abbreviation as a tenant name. So I'm just going to call it blog5, uh, uh, one, two, three, main street, Las Vegas, um, whatever, Nevada, Nebraska, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go through it. So this is going to be the admin account. So I want to make sure I provide info that I can actually use to log in. Uh, I guess I mistyped. If I can type, but I can't. So this is, uh, and here, this is the email ver verification. So it sent me an email uh, with a six digit code. I'm going to grab that from the file because my emails go to the file. And here's the code to verify that email. So we know that the email is valid. And now it's asking you to provide a credit card. So there's a fake credit card here that we can use with Stripe. This is Stripe uh, test data and it's a test mode. That's why we're connected to dummy site. And we're not gonna care, care about that. So everything is verified payment. So now you see what you're paying for. So here, uh, I'm saying that you know you're paying due now is $135 because you paid $100 for initial setup fee plus $35 for monthly. So that's how much you're gonna pay now. Uh, and then you can hit finish. And then uh, once you hit finish, if things work as planned, hopefully we'll have a brand new site and we'll get redirected. So right now we're here. And there you go. So now I'm in a new site called Blog5 because that's my site. And I have brand new site within seconds after I make a payment. So this right here, it's something, it's customizable. Uh, you, like I mentioned earlier, you can add any fields you want. You can remove fields if you want. If you don't really care about school information, you don't have to. I just did that because that's what I want. And if you want specific fields, you can add specific fields. So one thing I did because I am capturing uh, the, uh, where did it go? Uh, school abbreviation. Uh, yeah, up here. So school abbreviation right here. So I actually use this value to create the tenant name with. So I'm utilizing the events in code to ensure that that value is not used. Um, so that's something that I'm using code, um, basically because I'm taking a, a user input and making sure that the user input is valid and also that key doesn't exist before I create it, right? Because you can't do that. And here, whenever you create, uh, like you add values, you can actually map them. So if you look at data right here, he has a way for you to map this input to that sign up process. So like if you want, so for example, if you want this value to be utilized as a site name, you can map it to site name. And what this does, it allow you to take whatever value in this field and map it to site, site name. Uh, this is a property in your app settings, I think. Uh, but you have other uh, values or other uh, fields that he utilized for the sign up process that you can map to. For example, if you're capturing uh, billing information, you can map it to customer billing, first name, blah, blah, blah. And this information goes, I believe, goes to Stripe whenever you create the customer <clears throat> in Stripe. So there's few fields here that you can utilize. Um, and because I'm utilizing a product here, so because I'm doing that, what I'm doing in my events also is I'm mapping, if you select this product, I'm mapping the site recipe and the feature profile. So whenever we create the, uh, the tenant, we assign the setup recipe and we set up this feature profile for that tenant. So you can control that. Uh, there's a little bit more here that I'm not too familiar with, uh, but every time you create a customer, uh, somebody signs up, you'll have a customer here. So obviously these are all dummy data because I don't have real data, but here the idea is that you can see the payment information. So if someone 
paid. Uh, you can see those payments right here in the account profile. You can edit this information. So as you can see here, there's a lot of information that you can provide. And the reason why there is no information here because during the sign-up process, I didn't really map much data to the customer information. So if I mapped uh, during the sign-up process, the first name, then that first name would show it up here, but I don't have that mapping. So that's why you don't see it. Here you'll see payment methods. Um, so we saw earlier how you can do a monthly set up monthly payment and uh, and like annually billing. Unfortunately, this module does not initiate the recurring payment. And that's something that he is working on. I know that for a fact. Um, and eventually uh, the next version of this uh, module will have a way to automate the payment. And I do think uh, he might be waiting, and I could be wrong, but uh, he could be waiting on us to provide the jobs uh, functionality that we talked about a few uh, meetings ago, because background task, if you create a background task that processes these payments on the schedule, you could have an issue with double payment. Uh, and so we don't want that. And again, this is this is what I'm guessing why he haven't got to it yet. But I I could be wrong. This is just uh, this is I know it's an issue. If he decided to go that route, he's going to encounter that issue. Um, and in here, uh, he has a payment providers. So with a payment provider, you can create or add payment provider. He only have integration with Stripe. So when you create a Stripe. <clears throat> you can provide the secret key, the publish publishable key, and the webhook secret. Um, and one thing I did here, if you notice, that I actually on the side while this project was working, I have the Stripe CLI was working. Um, and that's how all these uh, uh, events were taking place, as you notice in the CLI. Um, so as I was signing up or whatever, I was getting these events from Stripe because I am in a test mode running locally. So uh, that's what's happening right here. And, and then let me see what else. Oh, and he has uh, another feature. It's called License Manager. I don't want to get into too much details with it because I don't have a lot of knowledge about it. But he, so this is, I'll just speak quickly. So adding a license, he actually create a way to license any product that you want. Um, and so here you can go in and add the license to, to your application. And there is a license manager that validates uh, the code. Um, as you can see here, um, there's a, a trial uh, license that I'm utilizing to be able to use this feature. Uh, so he has this. And if you want to utilize this licensing into any plugin that you have with his setup, you can. Um, all you have to do, I believe, is, is implement a class, uh, implement an interface to validate your license. So you can add a license, but you'll need somehow to validate it, right? And so for him, he has a, his own custom implementation that utilizes, that validates this, uh, his license key in this case. Uh, again, I don't know much about what goes in here in the license and um, I know he's working on improving it. So that's a, a, an addition module that he has uh, that uh, you can utilize. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I would love to try to answer them. Uh, but if I can't, maybe we'll get an answer from Neeraj. But I've utilized it and I've been providing him a lot of feedback since he started implementing it. And uh, I've been the I've, I've used it a lot so I, I know a lot about it so if you have any questions I might be able to answer but if not uh, we can get an answer from Neeraj unfortunately he's not here right now that's it questions comments thank you Yeah, I, I'm in the comments, I put I should use workflows instead of event under. Uh, maybe that's how it works, but it's, it's cool to be. Okay, so can you add custom pages, custom steps? In the... Yes, you can. 
Uh, so you can go here to page settings and you can add, like if you want a page between this page and this page, you can click here and then you have a new page right in here. So one one feedback I had for him and I wish he would change in, he said he's gone to. So the, the only thing that, this is a nice setup, right? So to be able to create steps, but here it's kind of concrete to site registration, which is great but it might be nice to be able to utilize, um, like creating multiple instances of this, right? Maybe I want site registration as one instance, but maybe another instance, maybe I want to create a, a, a registration for another service, right? So it might be nice to be able to create multiple instances of this, which is in this case, only a site page registration, uh, just like we have product content and content items. So I would think site page will be like a content type, but then we can create an instance of that uh, of that uh, the sign up process that you can utilize for something else. Uh, so my, that was a feedback that I I had for him. The wizard feature. Yeah, wizard exactly right. With a route, and then you can go into that, and it's like a form, like the forms module, but multi step. Yep. Yeah, that would be useful. Lots of people, I'm sure, want that to like to create uh, polls or custom forms, complex forms. Yep. Um, interesting. I was hoping Zoltan is here because uh, he's the reason why I did this demo. Because last couple of weeks he showed uh, the net. Uh, Nest, page that they nest. had yeah the, 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 that nest yeah and i had questions but yeah I was, i'm sure he'll watch this recording and provide us some comments if anything so it should be so i was mentioning without it should be a feature of the forms module because it's really for front end forms and this is why we have the forms module because it doesn't work for something else that is not a form so it has to be part of the forms module so you can split the form into multiple steps that would be interesting. So you would have a form, but there is another concept which is like page or step. And then, yeah, it's interesting. I'm going to do that extending forms to have the notion of steps. Even in the editor, it would just be another higher layer where you create a thing and you would drag and drop form elements and then you could go next and conditions for to go next and workflow activity. And yeah. Cool. The other side that will work. Okay, um, that's good. Thank you, Mike, for showing up the to work from Mirage. <laughs>